This young lady, she's no surprise to her. We love her every time she comes on. She's a fireball. She says she's five foot. She's five foot full of fun. Uh, the fun size. That's it. The fun size. I, I, she started as a locksmith down in uh, down in the Texas area, Austin, and moved around. She let, let, who knows? She called me. She's in Utah sometimes. Sometimes she's here in Vegas. We'll get together, have a bite to eat. And she's gone on the road again and flying all over the world. She's back down to Columbia. She's on the charts. Listen to me. She's in, on the charts in Columbia and done such a fantastic job. I, I, I just I can't say enough about her. Without further ado, can we give a warm welcome to none other than the regional director, the great, the one and only Miss Roxanne Corleno. train today. I love hearing these success stories, these celebrations. I'm like, let's just keep going through them. Let's just keep hearing these stories. And it's so great to be able to see that the people that are on these calls every single day, the people that are in the trenches with us, just like Miss Jackie Black, just like myself, just like Miss Maria Estrada, we're on these calls and we're absorbing this information. So these success stories could be ours as well. They will be ours as well. So I am so pumped up today. Thank you so much, Mr. Thomas. I have so much going through my head right now. As always, I have my notes, but I don't even know if I'm going to stick to them today. <laughs> I am just so excited for everything that's happening for Mr. Joshua Casey. Oh my goodness, how cool is that story? So I just want to touch base with him real quickly and what I've had the privilege of knowing him for the past couple months, really just we get together once a week and for accountability. So I did a training not too long ago about DMOs and he was one of the people that reached out to me and he was uh, just one of two that actually stuck with the DMOs. And he said, hey, Roxanne, I need some accountability. Uh, can we do these DMOs together? And I said, absolutely, our daily method of operations. And at that time, we were both running kind of slow. <laughs> so we needed that accountability. And just to see the difference just from a couple months ago, what our DMOs looked like then and what his are looking like now and to be talking to legends. I mean, it just takes a couple months. Where could y'all be in just a couple months by putting in the work? That's the only difference that's taken place. Some mental shift happened in his mind and said, hey, I need to get back to putting in the work. And that's exactly what we're doing. And what's so great about that accountability is that we don't let each other slip. It's like, hey, our numbers are low. What's going on? How can we change? Do we need to follow up with each other once a day and say, hey, who did you peak today? Do we need to schedule a day? We're in different cities where we go out and peak. What's the problem and how do we fix it? So I definitely want to give it back to Mr. Joshua Casey. Putting in the work and it pays off. Of course. How freaking phenomenal is that? So I'm so excited. Um, and now I'm next. <laughs> Let's see who is going to be on my list next. My chicken list. Let's go. I'm in all of your guys' as well. So back to the topic at hand, what my topic was, and he is showing prime example of what my topic is. Anybody remember what I said the topic for the month is going to be what we're going to be talking about? <clears throat> Who's got it? We can put it in the chat. I can read your lips. What is our topic? Anybody, anybody? Oh man, who's listening? So our topic is leadership. <laughs> that's what we talked about last week. Yeah, <laughs> Jackie Black is like, duh, that's all she's talked about. Yes, leadership. I want to focus on leadership just because people think leadership, as I mentioned last week, is just kind of what we do for our team. And it's just, it's so much more involved in that. And we can talk forever about leaderships and how to leadership and how to become a great leader. So last week we talked about serving others and serving others means not just our upline and what, how we become like our upline, but it's also serving our upline, our sideline and our downline all in different ways and how we serve everybody. Not only people throughout ACN, but our family everybody in work, our community, how we serve, that defines the leader that we are. How are you serving other people in your life? How are you serving your team? 
How are you serving your upline or your south line? People you don't have any gain from whatsoever. You will be surprised on how much gain you have. I have no financial gain with Mr. Casey whatsoever, but I love hearing this story. And my gain is going to be, hey, that's pushing me to do more. That's pushing me to go farther than I thought I could because I have someone that's already doing it. Why can't I? Why can't you? So serving everybody in our lives is great. We talked about that last week. This week, I want to talk about um, taking responsibility. And that's a really, really big, important one. And I feel like that's happening a lot with everybody around me right now. There is something in the air. I don't know what it is, but I feel a shift. I feel a shift with everybody around me. A lot of people on this call, something is happening. <laughs> and it's going to be a good thing. Something big is happening. Sam Foster is ready. He's like, I feel it too. Let's go. There's something in the air. Something is, there's a shift. So when we talk about leadership, when you go back and you focus about you being a good leader that you are, whether you have a team or you don't, you are a leader. You need to perceive that to other people because nobody will follow you unless they trust you. Nobody will follow you unless they know you care about them. So when we talk about your traits as a leader, do you know, do you reflect on what you're doing right? It doesn't matter if you have anybody in your organization that's active right now, you're still a leader and people are watching you. Do you know, do you record and reflect on what you're doing right as a leader? Number one is putting in the work. Are you putting in the work? <laughs> that is number one, because if your team sees you putting in the work, they know you're in the trenches with them. Like Mr. Casey as a regional director out there personally peaking, are you personally peaking and putting in the work? Or are you coaching your team to peak? Are you coaching your team to do this and not doing it yourself? That will demands a lot of respect from your team. If you're doing it also, they're like, hey, they're doing it. I can do it. So are you putting in the work? Do you know what you're doing right? Do you know what you're doing wrong? That's something we don't like to reflect on. Hey, what am I doing wrong? But we have to in every relationship in our lives. If you have a significant other and y'all are fighting all the time, hey, how do we fix this? Not only what are they doing wrong, what am I doing wrong? It takes two, y'all. So what are we doing wrong? But then also, what can we improve on? So those are three things that we have to reflect about and know what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, and what we can improve on. Continuously, growth is not something we read a book and we've got it. This is continuous every single day. So when we talk about taking responsibility, I mentioned it last week. I said everything rises and everything what? Falls. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Everything rises and everything falls on leadership. So if you're taking responsibility, your team will take responsibility as well. They will follow you and everybody in your life will recognize that. But how do we know whether we're taking responsibility or we have that victim mode? And I have a couple examples I want to go over where once I started recognizing the difference in victim versus responsibility, because you have to recognize it first. And sometimes you're like, well, these, they're not excuses. It's what really happened. Well, it's still an excuse. Either way, if it's a reason why you didn't do something or why you did do something, it's an excuse. So what's the difference? I remember the very first time, and this was years ago, even before ACN, I recognized that something wasn't right. I started, I was already an entrepreneur, locksmith, so I was already learning how to serve other people, how to become a leader myself, and I was working with uh, a security company, so I had other jobs here and there, um, or uh, not so jobs, but contracts with other companies. And I have this one company where it's a call center. So I have these virtual gate guards out in the middle of nowhere out here in Texas. And we have a call center. So oil and gas companies will drive up. And instead of having a man camped out there all the time, they push a button and they give their driver information. Then they get access to the property to work. It's oil and gas company stuff we do out here. But with this company, I noticed on my, we have cameras out there. I get their reports. I have, um, license plate reader cameras, all kinds of stuff that I can go back and refer to and create this report for my client. Well, I noticed a lot of information wasn't coming in through my call center. So I called them and I said, hey, I have these vehicles that are coming in. I can see the truck. I can see the license plate. I don't know what company they're with. I don't know the driver information. I don't know what pad they're going to because that was your job to get this information for me. And I had to give them the dates 
And after a couple of times, he just kept blaming his team. And he was like, man, I've told them time and time again, don't worry, they're going to get reprimanded for this. And he was just bad mouthing his team over and over and over. And I'm like, man, this guy is a horrible leader. He's a horrible manager. If this was me in the situation, my first thing would be like, oh, I apologize. We're going to have another training. We're going to review what needs to be done on this. This is my fault. I would take responsibility. But how is he blaming every single person on his team? And how does that build confidence in me as a client to be able to trust him? If he's saying they did this, they did that, they did this, and this is his team that he's responsible for. So that was the first time I started thinking like, holy cow, people are actually like this, where they blame everybody else and don't take any responsibility. And that was really the first time I've seen it in such a way, because he was bad mouthing his team so bad. He was telling me people were going to get fired over it. And I'm like, relax, it's just information. Nobody needs to get fired. It's not that big of a deal, but you're making it that big of a deal. Let's just retrain them and get it right the next time. That's it. Now, relating this back to ACM, I was at my most recent event uh, here in Baltimore. So when we're talking about victim responsibility, I hear it so, or I did hear it a lot with ACM. And I knew I took, I took part in it as well. When stuff wasn't going right in my business, the first thing that you want to say is, well, I can't get people qualified. People aren't signing up for services. Uh, they, I just can't get people to see the, the benefit of this. And they're, they're blaming everybody else not doing stuff. So at this event, um, there was a woman I had met for the first time. And I had a new rep with me. And we're all hanging out. And she just kept talking about my son just doesn't, he just doesn't get it. Like he, he can't get the concept. And this person's a real estate agent. And, and how come they, this will be so beneficial for them. And just talking about everything about everybody else. And it was just negative energy to start with so much that my new rep just walked away. My new rep hadn't received a no yet. My new rep hadn't had these issues, but she's complaining about other people bad-mouthing ACN. It's one of those pyramid things. It's this and it's that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is why I keep my reps in a bubble. <laughs> I want to show them the whole world of ACN, but I keep them in a bubble for this reason. And it was just, it started getting, it started a domino effect of just her going on and on. And I would try to change the subject and she would answer my question, then go back. And then I would try to do something else, answer the question and go back to the point where we had to leave. <laughs> so as a leader, for me, my first thought is, okay, I need to tell her that this isn't okay <laughs> because she is tainting the environment. I wasn't the only person around her. And so now if we're in this restaurant and we want to peek someone and the waiter's hearing her talk about this, why is the waiter going to think that this is a great opportunity for them? <laughs> because they just see how hard it is, how hard it is, but it's not. So we want to take responsibility for people not joining the business or whatever. My example to that is something that I had to come to terms with. Flipping the, it's kind of on the same topic, but flipping it a little bit is I recently presented to a real estate broker. I was so excited. Um, I told him about what I did. I wanted to sit down with him. I presented to him and he loved it. He loved everything about it. So this is fantastic. I need to speak with my partner. Awesome. So I walk in, I have a meeting at their office, their big real estate office here in San Antonio. I mean, they're okay. They have about 400 real estate agents. They have about hundred closings a month. So I am strutting my stuff and I am stoked. I'm like, oh yeah, this is in the bag. I am so confident because I already got one that's, that's ready to go. So I sit down, I deliver this 15 minute presentation to the broker, the other brokers there, that's a partnership. He's ready to retire. And I go through my presentation and I'm like, all right, so already pulling up my website, ready for them to sign up. This is how confident I was. And I'm like, this is the best presentation I've ever given. And then he says, well, let me think about it. And I'm like, oh, okay. He doesn't want to make a decision on the spot. No big deal. But as I continue talking to him and figuring out what he needs to think about, he does not want to sign up or he's hesitant. He was like, well, only if they had electricity, open electricity here in San Antonio. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's one of our 10 services. And I, this is what's going on in my head. I do not say this out loud. But I'm thinking if you have 100 closings a month, that's 100 at minimum internet customers, at 
minimum, because there's no other provider here in San Antonio they can get other than AT&T and Spectrum. It's in the bag, 100 internet customers. Some of those are gonna get TV. Some of those are gonna get home security. Some of those are probably one or two are gonna get a home phone, who stinking knows? But there's so many other services in electricity. And I'm like, what in the world is this guy thinking? And taking the victim approach, I can automatically say, oh, he doesn't get it. I don't understand what he doesn't get about it. And I can go through everything that it's why ACN would be such a benefit for his, his brokerage, not only for his clients, but for his real estate agents as well. And on top of that, they're also a property management company. So they have a hundred, over a hundred properties they manage every single year, or however long people are moving in and out. They have people, more services there that they can get. But then I sit back and I think for a second, I'm like, wait a minute. Stop taking the victim approach. Stop figuring out why this guy doesn't want to sign up and think about what I did. How in the world, in an open, a uh, closed electricity market, it's not open, did I put so much emphasis on electricity? Like, that's the number one thing that stood out to him. Out of everything, my entire presentation, why is he focused on electricity? Not because of him, not because he ever thought about it before. He never thought about it before. San Antonio has always been closed. It's because of me. I did something that I focused so hard on electricity. One thing I said, and maybe spent two seconds too long on it, whatever it was, that's what stood out to him. And that's what his focus is. So now I need to go back and look at my presentation and be like, what in the world did I do that I made that happen in the market that they can't get electricity? I know why. That's when I had just started my East Coast, um, my East Coast reps. I had just started opening out in the East Coast and we were focused on electricity. And I was really excited about that. I haven't been in an electricity market before. So I knew exactly why I focused on it, but that was my fault. No one else's, not his, because he didn't catch the vision. Mine, because I did not portray the proper vision for him. Are you guys following me? Are you following me? It's not his fault because he didn't catch it. Everybody that says no to this business, all those no's go for no's. Why are they saying no's? It's not their fault. It might be wrong timing, yes, but it's not their fault they didn't catch the vision. It's ours. It might be wrong timing for them, but then why, if we know that, that's why we have these questions to them in the beginning, why they would need something like this. Maybe we can project something for them in the future. They're great right now. Great. Their brokerage is super busy, but what happens during those slow months? That's what I could have focused on. This is something that can help your agent sustain during those slow times, the market goes up and down. Or how about having him stand out as a brokerage to attract more real estate agents with impact? I could have focused on impact, something that they can provide to their agents. And now other agents are gonna say, hey, this is the only brokerage that's providing something like this for us. This is the brokerage we wanna work with. There are so many other areas I could have focused on and I didn't. <laughs> I hope you guys are catching the victim responsibility. Take responsibility. Does that mean everything that happens is always your fault? Absolutely not. But what can we do to improve? That is the focus. And I see T nodding her head. And I'm, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to share something. Am I open to share conversations we have on accountability, T? Okay, I got the green light. I got her thumbs up. So when I say I feel something in the air, I really do with a lot of people. I felt it with Joshua Casey, and now I'm feeling it with Miss T. Hayes and other people on other calls that I have going on with people in this group. But she was on vacation, or she, she had left home. She wasn't at home, and she had these goals that she wanted to set, people she wanted to talk to, people she wanted to peek. But life happens. Stuff happens. And something was happening, and she just wasn't able to do the work. I don't want to get into too much detail, but stuff, it was family stuff. Stuff was happening. It, it involved um, hospitalization of family, just, just big things that people would have valid excuses for. It's a valid excuse why work didn't get done. But she finally gets back home. We get on our call. We meet um, twice a week, actually. And we get on this call. And even though she knows that other stuff in life was happening, she just said, I just didn't do the work. Oh my God, that opens up my heart so much. And I'm like, oh, just recognizing that every life is going to happen always. But recognizing even though life is happening, that she didn't do the work, I really felt something in her. And, and the rest of the girls did too. And it wasn't just that she, she admitted that the work didn't get done. It's that fire in her eyes. Like I didn't do the work, 
that next time you are dang straight, I'm going to put in the freaking work no matter what happens. That's what we saw in her. And it was just a phenomenal feeling. And I'm like, I, I feel it, T. I feel it. It's coming for you. Because <laughs> she could have had a thousand excuses and she didn't. She just said, I didn't do the work, but I saw it in her mind. Next time I will. And it's not going to change anything. So I'm really excited for what's next for T and everybody on this call. Um, so assuming responsibility, one thing is recognizing that that maybe it was us. Maybe we could have done something different. That maybe we could improve. We have areas to improve. Recognizing that and just saying, I didn't do the work. Is that it? Is that all we need to do? Just say, hey, I didn't do the work. Maybe I'll do it again next time. Heck no, because <laughs> that's a maybe. That's like, oh, well, I didn't work this week. I was on vacation or my kids were sick or I wasn't feeling well, whatever it is. Step one is recognizing it. Step two is taking that responsibility. But step three is what are you going to freaking do about it? What are you going to do next? What are the steps that you are going to take to make that change? So it's not only recognition, but it's taking those steps to making that change. And I said it last week again, and I said, trust the process and trusting the process isn't trusting in the process. It's trusting your change, your growth, your leadership capabilities throughout the process. How are we developing ourselves? How are we becoming better? The work is there. To be honest, the work is easy. We don't want to say easy. It's simple, but it really is easy. We feed people, we get customers, and we invite to invest. That's it, y'all. But the part that makes it hard is who we're being through the process. So trust the process. Are you guys developing better leaderships every single day? Who are you listening to? Who's your sphere of influence? Are you taking responsibility? These are things we need to recognize. So for this week, until we uh, convene again next week, I want you to just notice when other people aren't taking responsibility. Doesn't matter who it is, it could be your kids. Oh, I didn't pass that test because my teacher didn't teach me that section. Whatever it is, just start learning on, just start trying to pick up on situations like that. Not only the people around you, but yourselves. Record it, take your pen, Take your paper, write it down. This is what happened. This is what happened. This is what happened. And acknowledge how many times this happens to us a day with the people around us and what excuses we're giving ourselves and we're listening to. And from there, we want to develop and grow. But right now, I just want you to record. Record whenever people aren't taking responsibility. They're becoming the victim. Just realize how much that is happening in our lives. And then we'll start improving on that because we see it every single day. Thank you so much, Mr. Thomas. I will hand this back to you. I am so stoked. I'm ready to get to work, y'all. <laughs>